Hey guys and welcome to Petrol Pet and welcome to my COVID-19 daily vlog. Uploading a new video every evening at 6 p.m. to keep you sane during lockdown. Well, it is a beautiful day. It's time for another dog walk, but I'm gonna mix it up today. These two Herberts, where are you? They're getting very excited because we're going out, but we're gonna jump in Charlie Clubman and we're gonna go somewhere different for a walk today. Are you ready? Are you a bit excited? Come on, come this way. Yeah, who's going first? Uh, ready. <laughs> you. In you go. All right, sit down and be good. Ali's straight out. Oi, watch me, watch me boot you. Right then, should we go? We're going up this way. So yes, I thought I would mix it up a little bit today. Well, I've driven not that far from home to the foot of a big local hill called the Trundle. I'm gonna take a walk up to the top of the Trundle. Come on, girls. Beautiful views from up there. It's a very still day. I've been wanting to do this walk for a while. And while we walk, I thought we would talk about, well, about car dealerships actually, and why I think quite often they get it spectacularly wrong, but every now and again, they do get it right. Now, before we get going on the subject, regular viewers to the channel might recognize this track because uh, last year, I think it was, I bought a Jeep Compass up here. And I also come up here mountain biking a lot. This particular part is very rutted and the descent is epic. It's really good. Every time I go down it a little bit faster and it's a little bit more dangerous and I have a little bit more poo in my pants when I get to the bottom because one of these days I'm gonna have a spectacular off coming down here. But we should break through the tree cover very shortly. And as we're gaining altitude, the view from the top of the trundle is unbelievable. Come on, Dar Sloka, <laughs> keep up. It's not all about you. I know it's hot and it's steep. Now, I've not bought that many cars in my time. I'm not a serial car buyer, but I've bought enough from main dealers to have experienced the very best main dealers can offer and the very worst. And there's two things I want to talk about in this video. First of all is the kind of buying experience, and then secondly is the, the ownership experience, the customer care experience, the servicing, that kind of thing. So we'll start off with buying. And, and I get, I'm not bashing dealers here at all, but the first thing I wanna say is, Dealers need to remember that us car buyers are not mugs. We know how they make money. So I'm gonna to talk to you about the buying experience of my Mini Roadster because it had good bits and not so good bits. And it's a few years ago now. The good bits were when I went in to uh, test drive a car, it wasn't a Roadster as it happens, we ended up going out in a coupe. The young chap that dealt with me was a trainee sales assistant, but he had been working in the workshop as a technician and therefore knew everything about the car. And for me, that's a good thing because I have lots of questions and I wanna know all there is to know about the car. And we went out for a test drive and he answered all my questions. He was super helpful. We got back to the dealership, he found me a car, nothing was a problem. We found a car, we worked out the price of the things I wanted to do to it. Everything was brilliant. We even kind of agreed the price. And then I said, right, I want to pay by cash. I don't want finance. Let's get the deal done. I want to buy the car today. And at that point, things started to go wrong. He said, oh, I just need to speak to my sales manager. And in rocks this sales manager. And the first thing she said to me was, how are you going to buy the car? And I said, oh, I'm going to pay for it cash. The next thing she said really, really wound me up. 
where do you get the money from? Where's the money come from? Um, but, you know, I said, well, to be quite frank, it's got nothing to do with you. She said, I can make your money work better for you. You don't want to buy the car cash. You want to buy it on finance, small amount down, and then we can structure some nice, simple monthly payments over three or four years. I said, no, I want to buy the car cash. The whole reason I'm buying this car is because I've got the cash in the bank from the sale of my previous car, the Partex, and some savings. I don't want finance. That's how I want to buy the car. No, she said, let me run you some numbers, and off she trotted into her office. At this point, I'm starting to get quite cross, because I know that the dealership will make some commission on the sale of a finance product. And for some buyers, that is fine, but not all buyers want that. You should listen to what the buyer wants, and that's what you should really be helping the buyer fulfil. Comes back with some finance quotes, then she said, would you like alloy wheel cover, tyre cover, would you like us to put this special polish on it? No, I said, I don't want any of those because I know, again, you just make money from those. Are you sure? Yes. So at this point, I kindly said, look, you either hand the sale back to the young chap who's been dealing with me up to this point, or I will walk out of your dealership and I will go and find somebody who will listen to what I'm saying. Now, I'm not having a bash at the dealership, but that's happened to me on a number of occasions. I had exactly the same thing a few years ago when Mrs. Petroped, we were buying a Land Rover Discovery. Uh, again, we were buying it cash uh, and we didn't want finance. And the guy in Land Rover was like, oh, no, no, you can, I can make your work, money work better for you. So if dealerships think that we don't know that they make commission off of selling products like finance, like all the different insurance covers, gap insurance, Never, ever, ever buy your gap insurance from your dealer. I got quoted nearly £500 for gap insurance on my Mini. I went to my insurance company and I got it for less than £100. <laughs> and I, I always like to try and have gap insurance because it's a nice thing to have. I don't I only know one person ever that's ever dealt with it or had to use it, but believe me, he was glad he had it. So the first thing for me is dealers just need to just need to realise that we know how they make money. And especially when you're PXing a car and you think, look, is there some fat in the car? I know if I trade in a car, so I traded my Audi TT in when I bought my Mini. I think I'd trade it in for about £13,000. I know that that car's going to be on their forecourt within a week, at probably two or two and a half thousand pounds more than that. I know that. So there is some more fat in the deal. And I know I'm going to get some some subscribers that comment that work for dealerships or whatever that, that disagree with me but there just needs to be an awareness that us buyers know the game ah oh, it's a bit hot girls come on then let's go come on dude so we've got to the car park that's at the top of the path. You can hear the forestry guys doing some chainsawing in the background. Nice. But yeah, it's a beautiful view from here, but you can drive to here uh, and walk up the top of the trundle, or you can walk, as I said, up that chalk path. It is beautiful, but not all about my purchase of Ruby Rose. There was bad news. There was some really good stuff too. So let me tell you more about that. Come on, dude. Now I have been dying to bring you guys on a walk up here for ages, but there's only any point coming up here if there's no wind, otherwise it's very, very windy this hill, so audio would be a nightmare, but it's very still today, beautiful sunshine, it's still, it's only half nine in the morning, but what a view, I mean you can kind of make out Chichester's just there, you can, when we get a bit high you'll be able to see the motor circuit and Goodwood House, and then all the way over there, it's a bit misty today, but you can even see the Spinnaker Tower in Portsmouth, it is a spectacular view from up here. But back to the purchase of my Mini Roadster. So thankfully, the sale was handed back to the young lad who dealt with me in the first place. And from that point on, the purchasing experience was unbelievable. I had three things done to the car. I had the wheels sprayed black, spot lamps put on, and stripes put on. And that was gonna take a couple of weeks. And what happened is, at each step of the way, he sent me photographs, he sent me videos, and he got me really excited about collection day. This is in the days before I was a YouTuber. I'd already christened the car Ruby and when I came to pick up the car he handed me the key and on the key fob it was a beautiful John Cooper Works key fob and he'd had it engraved with the name Ruby and it's little things like that that just make 
the whole experience perfect for me. It was spectacular. And those are the little things. And when I bought the Clubman, the, the guys at the dealership where I bought the Clubman, were, they were just so great and so accommodating and did everything so well. And when that happens, that's when you go back time and time and time again. But when you have someone who's just not listening, I do lots of sales training and my favorite saying is, you've got two ears and one mouth for a reason. Listen to what the customer's saying. Don't try and tell them what to think. So now I've bought my car, now I've got to kind of keep it and look after it and take it for servicing. Now the problems start, potentially. Ali! Here we go. Uh. race to the top. Oh, you always win. Oh. Come on, Darcy. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, you made it, mate. Well done. Look at that view. That's your reward. Wow. Whew. That's a big bank to get up. There's the reward. You can also see the Downs golf course. Now, I don't know how many of you know I play golf. Um, I don't play golf that often. I used to play a lot when I was a kid. I got down to single figures handicap. Now, sadly, my handicap's like 20, but I am the biggest bandit ever. I have to wear a sombrero when I'm playing golf. I hit the ball a very, very long way. My issue is it doesn't always go in the direction it should be. <laughs> so yeah, when you hit the ball 250, 300 yards off the tee, if it doesn't go straight, you lose lots of golf balls. So what about owning a car. Let's have a chat about that, shall we? Now, to all of you Goodwood fans, some good news. I can actually hear a track day in progress around the motor circuit. They started up just yesterday. So that's really good news to see Goodwood back in operation. Uh, just a quick one, because I don't know, over that side, you can see the horse racing circuit now, or circuit, track, venue, probably a track. Goodwood, some 12,000 acres. It's massive. It sprawls pretty much as far as you can see. But from up here on the trundle, that, that's a brilliant view, right? So owning a car. So I have a couple of things here. Um, I'm not, as you might think, going to talk about the cost of servicing your car with a main dealer, the cost of labor and so on, because I kind of half understand that, although sometimes you do get stung for work that probably, you know, it's a bit painful, like an oil change or something. But my main gripe is when you go in to take your car to be serviced and you ask for a courtesy car, this is, when the, I just, this is a bit I never get. So I'm gonna talk about Land Rover. So my wife and I had a series of three different Land Rovers. We had a Freelander, then we upgraded to a Discovery, and then we went and upgraded to a Range Rover Sport. When we had the Freelander, we took it to the local Land Rover garage for a service and I booked a courtesy car and they gave me a Ford Fiesta. A Ford, a Ford Fiesta. So I went off and I came back and as I was waiting for my car to be kind of, you know, delivered and stuff, I said, can I have a chat with your dealer manager, please? And I said, I just bought a Freelander in for service and you gave me a Ford Fiesta. He said, oh yes, Mr. Greaves, was everything okay? And I just said, you're missing a massive trick. I have a Freelander. Now, any salesperson with half a brain, when I come in for a service and I ask for a courtesy car, you would give me a, dif a Discovery, the next car up. Or if I came in with a Discovery, you'd give me a Range Rover. Because that tempts me and makes me think, oh, look, I'm in a Freelander, but look how amazingly lovely the new Defender is. Quite fancy one of them. And I think about upgrading my car. It's really not rocket science. If you take your car in and you get a courtesy car, the very minimum you should have is the same car, if not the next car up. It's, a, it's an opportunity for sales. As I said in my day job, I teach salespeople all the time. The second a customer walks into the, the car dealership, even if it's for a service inquiry, it's the same thing when you ring a help desk, that is a sales opportunity. And so many dealers just don't see it, and I just don't understand it. And then just the general, you know, when you're in for a service, 
again remember we have a brain don't try and screw us over with things you know don't try and say oh, our pads need changing when they don't it's it's you know just just treat us like human beings but the the whole dealership experience and i've got lots of friends and family in in the catering industry and and high-end hospitality and i think the dealership industry could learn an awful lot from hospitality you know just nice things like coming in a welcome a, a coffee a nice chilled out area and i know some dealerships have these i'm not bashing dealerships in general but i just think they miss a big trick especially on the courtesy car side of things um, what i would say about my audi garage which i think is brilliant is if i can't take my car in and drop it off and get a courtesy car because often they don't have many courtesy cars they'll do a collection service so they come out to the house collect the car take it back service it bring it back drop it off i think that is brilliant absolutely brilliant there you go now then while we're here obviously not only do i have the most spectacular view over there but also if i just spin the camera around you can just make out there's a ribbon of tarmac running kind of along here just the other side of these trees and then it comes out there and it goes up that way and that is one of my favorite reviewing roads in fact there's a car coming around the bend there look that is such a great stretch of tarmac love it i bring lots of cars to review up there <laughs> you a bit hot mate are you no oh. And the last thing I want to talk about is being ignored when you walk into a dealership. And one of the things that spurred this subject for today's walk was one of the comments on a video recently where someone had been into a Mercedes garage and had a very, very poor response. Now, I appreciate that lots and lots of kind of tyre kickers go into dealerships and lots of people who are maybe trying to punch above their weight asking for test drives of cars they'll never be able to afford. And I know that the guys that work in the dealerships must have to try and wean them out. But it, so many times I have, I've been into a dealership with the actual purpose of buying a car and I've been ignored or overlooked or you know, no one's come to talk to you. But even something as simple as coming over and saying, somebody will be with you in a minute, Mr. Greaves, or you know, what are you after? The, the amount of times you get this kind of look and almost like a look down your nose as if to say, oh, you can't, you can't possibly be in here. I'm going to finish with just a great story just to kind of you know never judge a book by its cover a festival of speed a couple of years ago i was a guest of rolls royce and i was in their vip area uh, drinking champagne uh, i'd only just got to the event and they had a rolls royce dawn black badge parked up on the display a beautiful beautiful car and I could see this guy talking to one of the Rolls-Royce salespeople. And this guy was as scruffy as you could possibly get. Ripped jeans, long hair, kind of heavy metal t-shirt. Looked like a right oik. You know, you, you wouldn't have put him in a dealership for a, you know, a bottom of the end banger, let alone a Rolls-Royce. And he was chatting away to the guy from Rolls-Royce. And I have to say, I was a bit rude and sort of started to earwig into the conversation. And they were talking about the car and, and everything, and I was like, oh, it's nice, he's just, you know, a normal festival of speed goer wanting to know about Rolls Royce Dawn Black Badge. And then at the end of the conversation, the guy said, yes, it's really nice, yeah. I think I'll have it. Do you take American Express? And that was it. Bought the car there and then. 330,000 pound car. And he looked like he'd just gone to, you know, buy a KFC. Unbelievable. So there you go guys, with perhaps one of the most spectacular views I can imagine behind me, I will draw this video to a close. I hope you've enjoyed this dog walk and the subject. I would love to know any of your experiences with car dealers, put them in the comments below. But if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Comments below are always welcome. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to Petroped for plenty more content to come. And I'll see you on the next film guys. I'm now gonna walk back down the hill and get these girls a nice big bowl of water because they're hot and thirsty and so am I. You take care guys, stay safe.